Hello and welcome to an SDL tutorial. Now you will realize I have a better microphone now, I have a better computer, so the videos are going to have a better quality after all. Now I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to create several SDL applications starting by a simple, very very simple window. We're going to do it in a C++ style, which I believe it's going to be an interesting tutorial since most tutorials are for C applications or basically C with classes. In this tutorial we are going to be using modern C++ and therefore I'm going to be using CMake. I'm not going to be teaching how to set up different integrated development environments since there are many many out there and you will probably find tutorials on how to set each of them up. Now, the good thing about CMix is that it is actually cross-platform, so we are going to be able to use that quite, quite a lot. So, we're going to start with a plain C++ application. I'm going to be calling it C++, well, I'm sorry, SDL in C++. I'm going to be using CMake and I am personally going to be using the Clang compiler. If you want to use the GCC compiler or the MSVC etc etc you, that's your choice. They are going to compile SDL properly. The most important thing with CMake is setting up CMake properly. And I'm going to finish that. Now Qt Creator will create a default main.cpp. I'm not going to be using this, so the first thing I need to do is to delete it. Now that it's done, we can go into CMake and delete all of this that we are not going to be needing. The first thing is requiring a higher SDL version, uh, sorry, CMake version. This is going to allow us to give our project a, a version control inside of CMake, which for now is going to be 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Now if we run CMake here, we will see that the main.cpp file will have disappeared as we expected. Now I'm going to start by creating a window. Create a simple window. So as to be able to do that, we'll have to create another CMake file. inside a folder of the same name. Now if we run CMIC again, we'll be able to see our first tutorial. If we, and then we can give this other file a name. There it goes. Now, as I said, I'm going to be using a modern C++. Nevertheless, we still need a main file. So, I'm going to set that up in the first place. What we need to do is to set our sources directory, which is going to be basically our current so you make current source there plus the folder or directory rather src and our include files therefore our include directory is going to be in the current 
source directory plus the include directory with that now we can look for our um, SDL in the system there are several ways to do this my favorite way is to go into kitweb's page like here kitweb sdl find sdl2.cmake and they have their own system to find SDL2 in basically any system it's really really nice so I'm just going to get this document again this is from Kitware, this is not mine Kitware are the guys that created CMake basically and I'm going to create a new CMake module I'm going to do that in a new empty file called find sdl2.cmic the same name they gave here now this one is going to be found in here modules no sorry cmake modules they don't need to be here but honestly it's the best way to have your project properly set up and ordered now we paste that here I'm not going to change anything it's going to stay this way because I don't need to rename anything for example I like doing set but we don't need to do that anyway So now what we need to do is simic sorry set simic module path and we're going to use the simic source directory which is this one over here not this one this would be simic current source directory and we're going to go into Simic modules. With that, we should be able to use find package SDL2 required. Now, if I run Simic here, we will see the module appear because now it is in use and it says here that it's found several things threads and SDL2. With that done, we can go ahead and use a global file into called um, src files that looks inside our src directory and looks for any file finished in .cpp. Same for our include files which is going to be into the include directory for every, every .hpp file I like using HPP because these are going to be C++ files after all you can use .h anyway I just like using the pp in the end because these are not compatible with C at all now what we need to do is to set our include directories we're going to do so by adding our own include directory right there plus the dollar if we look here we'll see the name of the path sdl2 include dir Now we need to create a new executable. We're going to call it the same way the project is called. And we're going to be using the 
src files and then include files now we need to link the SDL2 library to our project so if we use the same name as the target which is the same name as the project in our case and then use the SDL2 library variable we'll be able to start using SDL2 in our project the problem is now we need to set up our project so that modern C++ can be used because otherwise it's going to go into older C++ and we do not want that so to achieve that we are going to be using target compile fixtures telling the, the CMIC file that we want to use in this target over here and we are going to be using a public compile fixture called cxx const xpr that's going to this over here is going to allow this target over here which is our executable our main file to basically use modern c++ now with that done i'm going to be creating our main source file remember we are going to be using an a src folder or directory now if we run cmic finger crossed src is going to appear here with main.cpp with that we can create our main sorry about that our main function just like that now we build us if we build this sorry it's obviously going to build but we can't do anything with it I'm going to go into debug I'm going to go into debug just in case we run to any problems that we are able to find them more easily if you didn't know setting CMIC into debug, minimum size release, release or release with debug information will change the compiler flags automatically for you you can add more compiler flags to them again this is not a CMIC tutorial so you can find tutorials about that in other places I'm just showing you how I set up my project so that you can follow up now with that out of the way we're going to start by creating a small window class, really really small. We can do that first of all with window.cpp and then with window.hpp but instead of src inside include let me change this definition cm sdl in cpp there you go and now if we, if we run cmic again we will see that our window.hpp and our window.cpp will have appeared now we have to include our window.hpp i am able to do this because here in CMIC list we said that one of our include directories would be our include directory therefore the project knows where to find all of our header files with that out of the way let's go ahead and create our first class 
I'm going to call it class window and because this can have errors I'm going to actually be including standard exceptions I use the standard exceptions because that way it's honestly much 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 easier throwing errors at, and catching them since you will simply have to catch a standard exception you don't need to catch a special exception you can catch this special exception but you don't have the need to now I'm going to be creating the class window and the class window exception which is going to inherit the standard runtime error inheriting the standard runtime error instead of inheriting uh, standard exceptions is going to make our lives much easier you will see in a moment first of all I'm going to set up the window class we'll need public functions private functions same with our exceptions except we don't need any private functions anyway now with that we will include oh, sdl2 sdl.h this header file is going to give us all of the functions variables etc that sdl uses now what i want to create is first of all a variable for everything we're going to need which is going to be SDL window and these have to be pointers window therefore we're going to be needing both a constructor an explicit constructor and an explicit destructor otherwise we're going to be leaking memory and data everywhere now that we have a window, we're also going to be needing a surface. Now, this surface is not going to stay with us forever, but for the time being, this is more than enough to create a really, really simple and basic SDL window. <coughs> now, with that, we will be able to create our window. How do we do that? Well. I'm going to go ahead and create a create function now this create function is going to be taking several quite a lot actually um, parameters sorry about that I, I couldn't remember what it was called if we go ahead and use the function sdl create window we'll see that it needs a title, an X, a Y, a W, which is width, an H, with its side, and several flags. Now, because we are using more than C++, I don't want everything to be exactly the way SDL asks for it. We will be transforming every single piece of data the user gives which is us, so that SDL can understand it, but so that our main uh, file over here only uses more than C++, not C. Therefore, the th first thing we need is a string that we are going to be calling title. Now we need I uh, signed in Tiga that is going to be called X for the window X now a Y now we need width and height if we go ahead and beautify this make it look better now if you remember we also needed several flags therefore I'm going to be creating 
a second header file which is going to be called window uh, um, I'm going to be calling it yeah window flux dot HPP again let me change these definitions there you go and the window dot HPP is going to be inheriting that window flux now this is going to be a simple enumeration class that is going to have every single SDL flag for the window that we can think of which if you go ahead and do this we have a beautiful list over here but because I'm lazy and I don't want to be doing that all the time I'm just going to open the header file that I have in my system which has every single flag possible I'm going to go ahead and do that So the first one is going to be the full screen. I'm going to be copying exactly these flags so that we can use them daily in our system. Open GL. Show. hidden etc. I'll catch with you guys later. Now that we've arrived to full screen desktop, if we check here in SDL we will see that it's going to be using window full screen or with this other integer. So the way to do that here is going to be doing a static cast we're going to be using the underlying tab type which is included in type traits now we go ahead and do underlying type for window flags type sorry for window flags let me check this real quick yep I was doing fine yeah so we have to get the underlying type for window flags for full screen and or it with this all right I was missing one of these tokens up oh. Right, uh, right here. There you go. Yeah, because we open static cast here and we close it here. In the same way, we open underline type here and we close it here. This is a little bit of a mess. I'm not really used to using it, that's why it took me so long. Now, I'll catch you guys later when I finish all of this copying. Now if you're wondering why don't you use the flags that SDL already gives us, you can do that, but I'm not going to do that because then the project is not going to look like modern C++, it's going to look more like a Frankenstein of modern C++ and Z. So I'm doing this so that our project is perfectly looking like C++, modern C++. 
Now, this flags in SDL should be possible to be ORed, so we have to create an operator so that we can OR them because strongly typed enumerations, aka num classes, in, C in modern C will not allow us to OR these flags. So, as to do that, we have to create an inline of type window flags for the operator OR that takes in window flags A and window flags B which will then return a static cast into window flags from a static cast into the underlying type of window flags itself like that for the first value or with another static cast into the standard underlying type of window flags itself for B. And here. Oh. What am I missing? A parenthesis. Oh, there you go. So, let me explain this to you real quick. What we are doing here is creating an inline of type window flags for the OR operator so we can do something like whoops sorry about that like window flags full screen or window flags allow high dpi otherwise we would, we would not be able to do this OR operation over here <coughs> What it's going to do is take in the first value, take in the second value, and it's going to return into a static cast of itself. Why? Because when you have a number of any kind, if you do a static cast into a strongly enumerated, uh, enumerate, uh, strongly typed enumeration, it will transform that number into an enumeration a strongly typed enumeration. Now, because of that, we need to transform these flags we are receiving here and here into integers, which is what we are doing here. The same way we did it here. It's the same concept. And now we can OR those integers that will be transformed into a window flag which will be returned. It's quite simple, somewhat difficult to read, but if you get used to it, you will get the drift. With that, we will be saying that we need a constant window flags flex. <coughs> I'm missing here some of these references. Let me fix that real quick. I don't want to receive a new value, just a reference to the old one, to the already created one. Mutifier Clank Format Format. Now, that was difficult. We created our function. Now we have to implement it. So let's start with this constructor. I don't know why I did that. I was weird, but we can fix that real quick. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure these two values are going to be null by default. Like that. And like that. Null pointers. 
and now we want to make sure that they are destroyed when the program is over. The first thing we need to destroy is the SDL surface, although because this is going to be a Windows surface, that is technically not necessary. So we are going to jump that step, since SDL will take care of removing that surface for us. So the only thing we need to do is tell it if window, which means if the pointer to window is not null, if there's something in that window pointer, we're going to do SDL destroy window, quite straightforward, and pass in that pointer and then make sure our new pointer, pointer is now NULL and if there's still a surface which shouldn't but we can never be safe enough just destroy sur mm, delete no this was oh free surface there you go. And make it null. <laughs> there you go. And now we can create that window. We're going to be receiving all of this data. But we have to transform it. So, the first thing we need to do to make sure that this window is equals to SDL create window. Now have in mind the first thing we need is a constant character pointer, not a standard string. So we'll take care of that here, not outside, so that everything looks more modern C++. Now this, ne this needs an integer, not an unsigned fast integer. So we're going to do a static cast into integer for our x. Same for our y. Same for our width. Our height. and then we can get the flags. We just do a static cast into... Let me check again what type these were. These were integers, right? Yeah, integers, so no problem there. So we can just do static cast, standard, underline type for window flags type of our flags yeah <coughs> now we have to make sure that's th that there's a window so if there is not a window we're going to be throwing an error, an exception rather. Throw window exception. And now we have to define what this window exception is about. So we're going to create a constructor that will simply take in a constant standard string reference to our message. Let me find that. Now the only thing we really need to do here thanks to the standard random error is to make sure that it receives the message. With that we will be able to retrieve the error message whenever we want. Let me change to this type of constructors over here and prefer them. There you go. So we are going to be throwing 
with this error mm -mm -mm, sdl get error now that is done nevertheless we have to make sure that sdl has been initialized all right but we'll get into that later on because we have to first create our initialization class so for the moment let's go ahead and continue with our window creation now that we've created our window well we've set it up so that it can be created we're going to create that surface that we were going to be using temporarily just for a few tutorials until we get into rendering more complex stuff what we are going to be doing is SDL get window surface window quite straightforward now again if there's no surface I want to be throwing an error throw window exception standard string sdl get error there we go with that we'll have created both our window and the window surface that we are going to be using to say render things it's not really rendering but somewhat all right so now the next step we need to do is we ha we need to have in mind that for the application to continuously update the window and for us to be able to exit the window we need two things first of all a small event handler which is going to allow us to exit every time the user wants to therefore the application won't get stuck another thing we need second place is to be able to update the window surface therefore I'm going to be creating two small functions. The first one is going to be the uh, event update event read actually it's going to be pass events because we're going to be passing them all right And then we're going to be needing in autumn user has quit which is going to be a boolean which is going to read from a boolean user has quit <coughs> and now we also need to update the window quite straightforward now we go here we have to add this bull false oops there you go oh um, I'm doing all sorts of wrong there user has quit there you go and we also need a beautiful SDL event that we are going to be calling event quite straight, quite straightforward too now we are going to be passing events window events therefore the only thing I'm going to be passing as of now is going to be the whether the user has quit or not so while SDL poll event for our small event this means as long as this is not zero whoops wrong keyboard there you go as long as this is not zero which means as long as there's events if the event dot type equals to SDL quit then we're going to be saying that user has quit is true 
all right? With that, we'll have passed our event. Quite simple, too. If we go into updating, updating sorry, the window, we only need one function as of now, which is going to be SDL update window surface window. Now the thing is, now we need to fill in the surface with some sort of color. So auto prepare renderer is going to be a void. I'm actually going to change the name of this function instead of window.update I'm going to say window yep window dot present render there you go now the way to prepare the render is to receive a color I'm going to I'm going to be using the OpenGL style color, which is with float numbers from 0 to 1 and everything in between. So, standard float team red, well, actually, it's going to be a constant standard float team and red constant standard flow type reference to green and constant standard flow type reference to blue I am not going to be receiving the alpha value because I want my renderer to be opaque we need to add here the standard part the problem here is that because SDL has its own definitions for these values they're going to be the IDE is going to be using them instead but they want the standard values the C++ values that was an easy fix though now with that we have to first make sure neither of these numbers is under or above zero if they are, we're going to be throwing an error. So we're going to be saying if red is under 0 0.f or, or green is under 0 0.f or blue is under 0 0.f we're going to be throwing an error but I don't want to be using the same window exception error I'm going to be using the window color exception the reason is so that users have it easier to handle any color related errors they may encounter or exceptions rather I don't, I don't want to just make it so that people have to exit the program on every time they encounter an exception I want to allow people to be handling those exceptions and fixing them where possible we're going to be throwing that window color exception saying under flow of window renderer color I'm going to be using this 
received um, actually the keep in the 0 0.0 1.0 range I should know that underflow means is too small now for if red is over 0 0.f or green is over 0 0.f or blue is over 0 0.f then throw the same exception but with the message overflow of window render color keep in the 0 0.0 1.0 range there you go <laughs> now with that we'll be able to set the color for our surface which is going to be our renderer for now to do that we have to do SDL fill rectangle uh, the destiny is the screen surface oh, the surface now this is going to be receiving a null rectangle the reason I'm using this null is because again this is SDL, this is C they have null, I'm going to be using it the only reason it's inside here is so that the main file is going to look exclusively like modern C++ the same for the flags the same for the class itself so that everything that should be visible is going to be looking like modern C++ now you dive in you're going to be finding this C-like behavior because of SDL which is not a real problem and now we need a map RGB which is going to be taking the surface format and now it's going to be taking the red, green and blue but remember that well SDL is going to be using unsigned integers of size, size 8 which SDL expects to be from 0 to 255 now you know this doesn't have to be always be true but for the most part it's going to be and SDL will handle it gracefully anyway so we what we need to do is to do a static cast into that wind 8 that SDL has created from our red multiplied by 255 in a floating manner what this is going to do is if we are in, if we are in one it's going to go into 255 which is the maximum value if it's in zero it's going to go zero which is our minimum value if it's in 0 0.5 it's going to be 255 divided by 2 I'm not going to do the math now which is the medium value therefore this is going to be transforming our floating value from 0 to 1 into an unsigned integer of size 8 from 0 to 255 and letting SDL handle it gracefully the way they like they being the SDL developers the reason I'm going to be using these floating values instead is because floating values are always going to be available between 0 and 1 therefore I'm going to be saving every architecture aren't I which makes me feel better I like being safe when programming point f with that we will have updated our surface so that it has a beautiful color now where were we? prepare render is ready Pass events is ready, present renderer 
is ready now user has quit I know this is going to be breaking the scope and everything but I don't really care it's just a really really small value actually to make it safer I'm going to be using const here and const here it's a constant value you cannot modify it that simple <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> sorry about that all right we have created all of that now we have a little bit of a problem we cannot use any of this why because we have nothing to initialize this deal with which is a problem but we can do that real quick first of all I'm going to be creating a header file called init flux.hpp let's change this real quick again sdl in zpp there you go and now we're going to be creating another enumeration class now we come here again and use sdl init everything for example and go into the file that has all of it defined we're going to be able to see every initialization flag and how and what their values are so the same way we did with the window flags I'm going to be copying all of this data into our init flags instead so a way to do that again is to create our enumeration class and hide and do timer equals to that audio equals to this etc be right back and we're done with that again this is a simple video so if you need you need to pause it so as to see exactly how I've done it just pause it you can rewind it I explained before why I've done all of this the thing is that these were many of them because you have to initialize timer audio video events joystick haptic and game controller so as to initialize everything per the sdl files therefore i thought i would jump ahead from that now i'm going to be redoing that or operator just to make sure everything is clear so again these flags have to be ORed, that's why they are flags, but this is a strong enumeration type from modern C++ and they cannot be ORed by default. So the way to do that is to create an inline of the type of the flags, which is init flags, with the operator OR and receive in two init flags, like that. And now we have to return the static cast into the type itself so that anything that we have inside here, which is going to be a number, it is not going to be one of these enum classes, it is going to be a number. This is going to allow us to get the that number into one of that flag, into one of those flags. So with that we can do again static cast into the underlying type of our flags for A. Oh, I'm missing here one of these guys, there you go. And we can or that with the second value. using again a static cast into the other line type of the init flags like that for the second value now we have the initialization flag set up therefore we can now create a small class for the initialization which I'm going to be calling hmm let me think real quick we're going to be calling this um, 
engine. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be engine. Oh, I just missed, sorry. Now again, we are going to be changing these definitions real quick. Like that. There you go. We're going to need to include <coughs> our init flags and we're going to need to include sdl2, sdl.8. Now the class is going to be called engine and there's going to be again a class called engine exception. That is going to be inheriting our good old friend std runtime error. I'm going to directly create this engine exception real quick. Const std standard string reference to the message. And I'm going to Oh, we need to create our source file actually. engine.cpp include engine run simic real quick so we can see every file here in Qt Creator and let's uh, let's add a definition real quick, real simple. Oh my, what have I done? There you go. Now, std runtime error message.c string. The reason I transform this standard runtime error into a constant character pointer is simply because runtime error used to be uh, used to receive a message, but since C++ 11 or 14, I can't remember now, it prefers the um, constant character, so I'm going to be using that. Now, the only thing we need to do here is to create a function called, well, we need to create a destructor and a function called start start the engine that is going to be taking in those initialization flags that we created before again all of those flags are equal to the ones in SDL you can use them, I don't want to use them so that it looks more like modern C++ it's that simple, it's nothing else to it now I'm going to be creating this definition over here, if I can properly cut things, there you go. Now, the destructor, the only thing it needs to do is quit SDL, quite simple. And our starter needs to initialize SDL. The way to do that is SDL, SDL init, static cast, win32 flux quite simple oh let me check one thing real quick actually here in the flux for the window yeah SDL takes win32 so we can simplify this into win32 instead of using the underlying tab type for the flags, I'm just going to cast it into the type that SDL asks for. I think that simplifies things. Now, SDL init will return a number below zero if there's any error. So, we're going to be saying here, if this is under zero, we're going to be throwing an exception throw engine exception standard string sdl get error that's awesome isn't it? and that's basically our sdl engine for our simple window we don't need anything else for now 
So, now remember here in window, surfaces on the window should generally be destroyed before the window is destroyed. The thing is that because this is a window surface we have defined here, when we destroy this window, the surface should go with it. Just in case it doesn't, after this is processed, I'm going to be processing this. Actually, we need to add this, otherwise it's probably going to complain anyway. Alright, we're going to be doing that. Now, because we have now an initialization system, alright, we should check whether SDL has been initialized or not. So as to do that, we're going to have to change just a little bit our constructor. We're going to be including the init flags and we're going to be taking the a constant init flags reference like that. <coughs> Now here, we're going to be saying, uh, give me a second please, so we're going to be doing auto init equals to sdl was init and do a static cast into uint32 from flux. Now we're going to be saying that if init and sdl, oh sorry, and static cast into uint32 flux Sorry, if not, then we can throw our window exception complaining about the fact that we have not initialized this A SDL. SDL was not initialized. Do so before creating a window. All right. Let me explain this real quick. So, what we're going to do, be doing is getting an SDL was in the value, which is going to be returning an uint32 value into a variable. I'm going to be using auto because it simplifies things. This init is going to be transformed into an uint32 as soon as the compiler start starts working. Basically, because this is a uint32 variable. I'm going to be checking whether these flags had been initialized or not. Now, if I say if not init and static cast uint32 flags, which means if these flags cannot be combined like this, then we are not initialized. It's that simple. Now, so as to do th make that way easier, I'm going to be creating a private variable called flux. I'm going to be saying auto flux that is going to be returning an init flux variable. But this has to be constant, so that it cannot be modified. Now, if we go here, we will be setting this flux like this, flux equals to flux, quite simple, I'm going to be creating a 
No. The definition for this. Oops. There you go. The definition for this guy over here. No, stop that. And we are going to be returning flux. Quite straightforward. <laughs> now, with all of that, we can go into our main file over here and include both the engine and the window. So we're going to be creating a engine eng with the flux init flux we're going to be using video only for now we don't need anything else anyway and then we're going to go into window w is going to be taking the engine flux and then we can do window create yeah with the title simple sdl window and I'm going to be saying hmm, zero zero eight hundred six hundred remember this is x y with height and then we're going to be using the flux which are going to be allow high dpi or window flux Mm -hmm. and shown that's basically the simplest possible SDL window with high DPI if we didn't want high DPI support we can make it even simpler but there's no point in doing that now we go back here we remember that we had Past event, past event, prepare the renderer, present the renderer, and whether the user has quit or not. Therefore, we can create a small game loop here. While window, while not window user has quit. Therefore, as long as the user hasn't quit, we start by passing events. which are going to tell us whether the user has quit or not, basically. Then we're going to prepare the renderer. Prepare renderer. And I'm going to make it wide. 1.0, 1.0, well, F, 1.F, 1.F. Oops. And then we can present the renderer. Now I compiled, there was a problem, pretty simple, I forgot, telling this it was a void. My bad. Let's compile again. Alright, so I completely forgot how to use our classes, so let's fix that. Eng does dot init flux video let's compile again still complaining let me fix that now engine is not a pointer window is not a pointer again window is not a pointer there you go Alright, let's compile again. And it built. Now, if everything is fine, it should run, 
should show a really simple SDL window, white background, and we should be able to tinker with it a little bit. And there was a problem. Let me fix that. So I just realized I was creating all of those exceptions and I'm not using them. How stupid is that? So the first thing we want to code is the to catch, sorry, is the color exception. If there's any color exception, I want to do the same again, but with smaller colors, so I'm going to be using 0 0.9 0 0.9 0 0.9 and in any other case for now I'm just going to get the standard exception complain about it, actually I'm going to complain about it here too <coughs> we need to include iostream for that and here I'm going to complain alright and then return with a one. Let me see if I fixed it. And I realized I forgot making these exceptions to be public. If they're not public, we cannot access them. So let me fix that real, real quick. We have to do this. Everything has to be public. I like including these mistakes because I think it's good that if you're a beginner that you will see how the process of fixing things can go through. It's a little bit tedious but it has to be done so I think it's better if you can see it being done. So I realized about something. As you can see there's some error here, probably my fault, but the information received here is really limited so I'm going to add some more information. I'm going to change this to be received plus oops received there you go plus std to string Red plus steady string comma plus std to string green plus std string comma plus std to string blue plus std string but should be kept alright so I'm going to be doing that and that and beautified and now the arrow is going to stay there but we can see a more beautiful thing can't we there you go so we received that but it should be kept there let me fix this <laughs> all right so <laughs> it was a little bit impossible doing anything because uh, yeah zero zero yeah there's no range here, so <laughs> let's make the range work. There you go. Now it works. So, 
as we can see, there's a little bit of a window here. What we're doing is we're creating the engine, starting it with the video flag, creating the window, telling it what flags we've been using so that we can make sure it's been started properly, then creating the window, and then when the user has done quit, pass the events, prepare the render, and present the render. Now I repeated this again with should be smaller colors just in case you know should never happen but you never know so <coughs> sorry so there you go now we can make this a little bit more beautiful if we open our window again we can close this perfectly and let's make it a little bit more beautiful so auto run simple window and we're going to be taking here const standard float type reference to red const standard float type reference to green const standard float type reference to blue It's going to come here and actually we need here the void auto initialize um yeah cons init flags reference flags and that's gonna be coming right here there you go so let's take all of this out I'm just going to be making it beautiful now Now we can handle the errors properly and in a more beautiful and less repetitive way. What I'm going to be doing here is creating a function called initialize that is going to be taking the flags in and returning our engine. Therefore we are going to be creating inside of it the engine, starting it with set flags, my bad, flags, and returning it. Then we are going to be running a simple window which is going to be taking in the engine, the red, the green and the blue. It's going to be telling the window what engine flags we're going to be using, it's going to be creating the window and then it's going to be passing all of the events and everything. Which we should actually do in a better fashion, give me a second. So now it's everything ready. So we initialize it that's going to return an engine. Now we can run the simple window as long as we have the engine for the flags, create it, return it so that in the game loop we can receive it, receive our colors and pass everything. Now we run this, it's going to run as expected. Perfect. Now if I had a mistake here and did for example a 3 there first of all it's going to complain receive 3 1 1 but should be kept in the 0 1 range and as you can see now our application is slightly grey why is that? because it's gone here it's caught that error and it's tried again after reporting the error try it again with a different color set, a smaller one. That's basically a basic error handling. You can do it on your own way. I've done it this way but it's C++, it's quite free how you do things. 
Now, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and this is going to be a C++ centered series, more than C++. Therefore, anything that has anything to do with C is going to be hidden behind the lines here in those ZPP files. Now, uh, we will be adding more functions for the window header, like centering the window, like changing its size and position, like changing its render color. That's going to be for the next tutorial. For the time being, we can create a simple window, let's recap, that will manage errors, simple color errors, try again with a different color after reporting the error so that we know what went wrong and we can fix it. And it renders every single frame constantly because we're in a while loop. But at the same time we can exit it thanks to being passing these events that will tell us whether the user has quit or not. With that, because of how we created our program, if the user has quit, the window will quit and clean everything up thanks to our destructors, both hearing window, destroying the window, and the surface if there was any problem destroying it, and the engine if there was any problem, uh, sorry, uh, and the engine quitting SDL. That's about it for now guys. The next, the next tutorial is going to be slightly more complex, a slightly more complex window that can move around, can change colors, etc, etc. See you guys in the next tutorial. I will be uploading this to my GitLab page, I will give you a link to it. And this is a simple video, you can simply pause and rewind anytime you need, especially for these flags over here that are a little bit more complex. But yeah, that's about it. See you in the next video.